Hi, I'm Steve Pond. We're here at the Rap Studio at the Sundance Film Festival. I'm with Marie, Marina Zinovich, the director of Lance. Welcome. Thanks Thank for coming. Thank you. Thank you. So this is a documentary about Lance Armstrong. And I guess the obvious question is, why, why is Lance Armstrong <laughs> now? Um, so there were a couple documentaries about Lance made six to seven years ago when he was on Oprah and the whole story broke and what have you. Um, what's different is that a lot of time has passed. And I think he was willing to step forward and kind of tell his story. Um, I think. <laughs> I mean, I tried. I tried. Um, he was approached by ESPN and uh, they came to me. And uh, after they got him on board, I don't know if he wanted to do it initially. I mean, it's like it's a it's you know, it's all a dance. Um, but basically I was interested in tackling this because I was told I could ask him anything and, um, you know, you're not often, I mean, I'm not really a journalist. I'm a documentary filmmaker, so it's not kind of like I'm Barbara Walters or something where I'm going after someone, but I felt like I could Mm -hmm. and I, he was willing to kind of go there. So I'm really hard on him. So that's why I'm sorry you haven't seen the film yet because... Um, it's just, it's intense. It's intense, but he's honest. And, and I interview a lot of his, um, enemies and family and friends and teammates and haters and lovers and, you know, so, Mm -hmm. so. So when you got, when you got involved, had he agreed to, to be interviewed yet? By the time ESPN called me, I, he had agreed. Mm -hmm. So. It wasn't normally, it's kind of like me chasing someone. That's kind of what I do. (laughs) Um, But they had approached him, and so, um, sorry, I thought I heard the phone again. Um, They had approached him, him, and then they wanted to work with me. I'd made a film about the Duke lacrosse scandal and got a lot of people to be very open about what had happened there. So they thought I was, like, the perfect person. Mm -hmm. So when you're sitting across from somebody who has spent a lot of his career lying to everybody, how do you get to the truth? And how do you know that you've gotten to the truth? Great question. I mean, that's part of the beauty of this was that I could go like, oh, come on. Like, you're, can I cuss? Yeah. It's like you're fucking kidding me. I mean, it's like, and he's like, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you, Marina. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. And it's just kind of like... You know, <laughs> it's that's part of what I what I liked was trying to see, and you know he he plays games. I mean, it's all it's it's a it's it's a game in the sense that he's trying to control me a little bit. I'm trying to manipulate him a little bit, but all you know in a good way. <laughs> he's trying to get what he wants. I'm trying to get what I want. I mean, but when someone has lied so much. You know, you do question, but I have to say that um, what I found really interesting was he has processed a lot of what he's gone through and has come out the other side for himself. Other people haven't, and that's their prerogative. But it was interesting to go around and interview different people who hadn't processed and then people who had processed. And, you know... (laughs) <laughs> then you get into kind of scorekeeping of like, well, has he processed enough about what he did to me? Well, he hasn't. It's just, it's, it, it was also fascinating to see the people who um, accepted his apology, the people who felt that he didn't apologize enough. I mean, it's all this kind of how people live with themselves, how they live with what something's done to them. Can they forgive them? All that kind of stuff is just, I, I love kind of delving into that. So I think he was honest, but, you know, and he tells me, Maureen, I'm not going to lie to you, you know, but then everyone else says, oh, he's going to, he's going to, he's going to lie to you. So. Uh-huh.